call the council meeting to order tonight. We have a quorum present. Tonight we'll be led in the invocation by Pastor Dennis Thomas of Cliff Avenue Free Methodist Church in Sioux Falls. After the invocation, we'll have the Pledge of Allegiance. So at this time, I'd ask everyone to please rise. I'd like to uh, read a verse, first of all. The God who made the world and everything in it, the Lord, is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in temples made by hands. From one man he made every nation of men, that they should inhabit the whole earth, and he determined the times set for them and the exact places where they should live. He determined that long ago, that we would be here now. Let's pray. Lord, thank you that you've predetermined things that we don't even know about. And in the struggles of finding our way, I pray you may give this council grace, wisdom to work together, to find the right way to proceed with the uh, affairs of this city. We ask you to bless our city, bless this council, and may we find the perfect will of God as we go. Help these people to work together to please you and to do what is right for every citizen of this city. We pray in the name of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, we'll get started here. Um, is there a motion to approve the consent agenda? I so move, Knutson. Knutson, is there a second? Jameson seconded. Are there further motions on the consent agenda? I believe there's been a, a request for an item on the consent agenda to be addressed. Did take a motion to remove it from the consent. Yeah, you got to you got to have the motion. It just takes one or two. This one. A motion and a second. To remove okay. It. You got you got to remove it though to talk. Re request that it be removed and placed on the regular agenda. There's a motion by Jameson to remove it. Number 10, I believe it is. Pardon? Number 10. Right. Is there a second? Second. Let's, let's second it. Okay, we've got a motion been made and second to put on the regular agenda. Is there further discussion on that motion? Not all in favor of that motion to put on the regular agenda a vote. Yes, those opposed vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. That motion has prevailed. Item 10 will go on the regular agenda. Uh, is there any further motions on the consent agenda? Not all in favor of approving the consent agenda will vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present have voted. The consent agenda has been approved 8-0. Now we move to the regular agenda. Is there a motion to approve the regular agenda? So moved. Benninga? Benninga moved. Is there a second? Second, Jameson. Jameson seconded. Further motions on the consent agenda. Uh, Mr. Mayor, I'd like to make a motion that the uh, uh, to amend the main motion by moving item 44 uh, before item 20 of the regular agenda. Okay. And I would like second. to second that motion, Mayor. Okay, uh, that motion been made by Litz, seconded by Brown, that we move item 44 above 20. Further discussion on that motion to amend. If not, all in favor of the motion to amend will vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present have voted 8-0. The regular, that motion has been approved. Now we're back to the, re uh, the regular motion. 
Any further motions? Not. Do we have to make a motion to put an item down or is it not at the end of the agenda? Does that go to the end of the agenda? It goes to the end of the agenda. Item 10 goes to the bottom of the agenda unless somebody makes a motion to move that one or you know, if you want to leave it at the end, that's fine. Item 10 would be at the bottom of the agenda? Yep, it, goes to the, it automatically goes to the bottom. I move that it be placed uh, uh, right after number 44. Okay, number 10, item 10 that was taken off the consent agenda to move below item 44. Jameson made the motion. Is there a second? Second. Let's let's second. Further comments on that motion? Seeing none, all in favor of that motion will vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Councilmembers Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. That motion has been approved 8 0. Any further motions? Got a motion made and second to approve it as amended. So all in favor of the approve the regular agenda as amended will vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Regular agenda has been approved 8 0 as amended. Now we're at item 44. Public input? Go ahead. Public input. Well, public input. Anybody would address the council for a period of five minutes at public input. We'd give you five minutes and then we just ask that uh, you give your name and then your address. Anyone want to come forward at the public input time? I, I see no one that is coming forward, so we will move into the regular agenda. Item 44. A resolution include, or I'm sorry, Charter Revision Commission summary prior to April 8, 2008 ballot proposals. Mr. Mayor, Councilors, my name is Lon Strohschein, Vice Chairman of the Charter Revision Commission. I'm here to present to you the, uh, the revisions to the Charter as amended by uh, my Commission. The Commission was appointed by Mayor Munson with the advice and consent of this Council. The Commission consisted of five members. Dick Gregerson was the Chairman, Commissioner Pam Miller, Commissioner Tam Baker, Commissioner Bill Early, and myself, Lon Strohschein, Vice Chairman. On behalf of the Charter Revision Commission, I'm pleased to present the City Clerk this summary report of 10 proposed ballot measures for the voters' consideration on Tuesday, April the 8th. As a courtesy to the Council, the Charter Revision Commission has provided for you a copy of the Commission's report. The Charter Revision Commission held its first meeting on September 6, 2007. Since that meeting, we held 11 additional meetings in this room in an open and public forum during business hours and during evening hours. The mission of the commission was to first hear and learn the concerns of the voters. Second, it was to hear and learn the concerns of this administration and this council as it relates to the matters involving Sioux Falls City Charter. A third mission of the Charter Revision Commission was to review the charter in its entirety and give consideration to changes or clarifications we deemed necessary. The goal of the Commission was to make any changes necessary to keep our Charter a living document that remains practical in application and effective in operation. With all due respect, I think this Commission has achieved that end. This Commission did hear from or present to all the Council members and the Mayor. We truly appreciate your input. We resolved early not to fix problems that weren't broken and we asked many questions and clarifications of various City offices. By definition of our appointment, and to give consideration to more areas of the Charter, this Commission shall continue to meet following the April election. We look forward to any future input the Mayor, members of this Council, and the voters of, city, of the City of Sioux Falls want to bring forward to us. On behalf of this Commission, I respectfully submit to the Clerk to the, of the City of Sioux Falls the Charter Revision Commission Summary Report. Madam Clerk, please file and present these amendments to the voters for approval. Thanks, Len. Questions? Of Lon? Okay, there's no action needed on that. If there's no questions, then go ahead, Pat. Lon, you uh, disappointed information. Your commission uh, is going to continue to meet and work on some items that really couldn't come to resolution. Can you give us an idea what you think you'll be continuing to work on? A uh, few things. and We don't necessarily have a, a particular 
uh, agenda at this point. We felt there were, there were some things that didn't get full attention of the council, of uh, the commission, excuse me. Uh, one of them being uh, we discussed mayoral pay and, uh, and how that was, uh, how it's set forth in the, in the Constitution how the mayor is to be paid. And we wanted to see how other communities the same size as Sioux Falls uh, uh, compensated their, their leadership. We felt we didn't have enough time to adequately address that in time for this election, so that was something we tabled. Our, uh, our uh, appointment goes through uh, 2010, at which point if we have something that we feel we could bring forward, we would have that election to do so. In the meantime, as you, uh, with all due respect, if there's anything that you believe we missed, we truly would love your feedback on any, at all points to help us address anything that you think we may have missed or overlooked. Uh, we can't fix it if we don't know that it's broken. So if there is anything, we encouraged you during the last process and we will continue going, uh, to go forward to urge you to come visit us if there is anything that you think needs addressing. We're very open to you at any point. That would be one example. Uh, but like I uh, said, uh, uh, Councillor, there is no set agenda at this point. Dean. Um, I don't have a question, but I would just like to thank you and the other members of the commission for your many hours of hard work on this uh, project. It's a very important project, obviously, for our city. And, and again, the fact that all of you were willing to volunteer this much time to do this. And I really think it's great that you had meetings, held meetings during the day and in the evening. And again, I know they are all on uh, SiouxFalls.org, on Granicus 2, and so forth. But thank you very much. Thank you, Madam Chairperson. I will question? extend that to the, to the rest of the commission, too. Thanks, Len. Further questions? Move to accept the report. So moved, Benninger. Motion been made and seconded. All in favor of that motion, will vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council Members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. The report has been accepted. Uh, item 10 now. Robert Colby, parcels 27620, 48834, and 48875 for property taxes in the amounts of $1,601.46, $2,381.82, and $1,295.73. Good evening. My name is Robert Colby, 636 West 21st. The um, listed, and I was not aware of this until <clears throat> this evening, was the, the denial for payment of taxes from September 18, 2006. The taxes were paid on this property um, in May of this year. So the only part of the ta property tax that is in arrears would be the November 1st payment of the property taxes. Now, if I am, <clears throat> without going into a long litany on the, on the history of this whole, um, what do I say, interesting story, does that mean that if the property taxes which are in arrears are paid, that this would be affirmed? Mr. Mayor, uh, Commissioner Colby, my understanding from the report that I read, and, and we're at a bit of a disadvantage here in the city because we don't know the facts behind this. But my understanding is that the Director of Equalization and the State's Attorney do not believe that the request for abatement falls with any of the six categories that are recognized by statute. Uh, some of that is factual in nature, facts that the city doesn't have uh, access to, but I did discuss them with the state's attorney and, uh, uh, you know, frankly, for me to say what those purported facts are would be hearsay and I would not like to do that. That would better come at a county proceeding. And I was told when I went to the, um, the director of equalization that I wouldn't have to first make a presentation to the city. Mr. Uh, Mayor. That, that is common practice. The statutes say that the county commission grants an abatement, but if the property lies within the city, it can only be abated with the consent of the city council. As a matter of practice, uh, any abatements that lie within the city generally come to the city council first. 
Uh, this one is, is much different, though, because it originates with a lawsuit that was commenced by Minnehaha County against Commissioner Colby. And frankly, I don't know. I don't know the substance of that lawsuit. I don't believe it ever. I believe it was settled, wasn't it? Uh, there was a finding in that it's a long story, but the finding was never established on whether I owned the property or did not own the property. That's never been adjudicated. The, the settlement that took place or that, that was brought before the judge was whether or not the procedure was uh, done in due course of time. It's kind of like running a, um, a race and uh, you haven't decided whether you won the race or lost the race. You had two flat tires and couldn't get on the track. And because you didn't get on the track, you were disqualified. So the, the adjudication has not taken place on the property. If you wish, I can give you a, a, a background story on it. If you are, Mr. Mayor. Mr. Mayor. Mr. Um, Gary, am I to understand that um, eventually the county would have to approve this before it would become effective? That, that is correct. Uh, if it were denied here, it would never go to the county. If it went to the county first and were denied there, it would not come back here. What if it was approved here? If it was approved here, it would go to the county. And I, so our, our options are to send it back to the county, approve it, or deny it. That's correct. The three, that's the three options the council has. Mr. Mayor? Yes. It, unless Bob has anything else he wants to convey to the council, I would make a motion to defer it back to the county. They have more information on it than we do, and then if they approve it, then we ultimately can, can act on it at that time. Second, Kavanaugh. Second, Kavanaugh. Okay. But if Commissioner Colby's got something more he would like to relay, I'm, I want to give him his time. To the long and the short of it is that uh, buying property at tax deed, which is surplus to the county, and acquiring same while I was on the commission, a, st a Supreme Court judgment about uh, a something s similar happening, happening in Aberdeen. Uh, my purchases were at public auction. The other Aberdeen decision for the Supreme Court were a little collusion, and in the dark of night, mine were always in the bright of day. <clears throat> And it's exacerbated by one of the things is the county has taken the property, and guess who bought some of the property? The city of Sioux Falls. So it, it is a story that uh, you probably won't find anywhere except on a um, soap opera. And what happens is I've run out of money for justice. What has happened is, according to Commissioner Peckus, who quoted Judge Hurd, never let the law get in the way of doing justice. And in this case, the property I have, I bought and paid the taxes on, has never been determined whether I own it. If you use the state's attorney's interpretation of the law, it says that it can't be sold to a, an elected official at the county. Because of that, the sale is null and void. If the sale is null and void, that means I get the purchase price back and all of the taxes because you can't collect taxes on a sale you don't that's never supposed to have transacted. If I do own it, then in the course of the action, the county has taken the property. It was sold, the larger parcel, for about $3,500 to the city last uh, August, September. So I'm in a quandary. If I own it, fine. If I don't own it, then I should be getting my monies back and my property taxes that I paid back. But right now, I have not only invested in the uh, North Phillips property, paid the property taxes, but I have spent uh, a fair amount of money trying to get the item settled as to whether or not I own it. The decision of the state's attorney was predicated on a Supreme Court decision, and he was using a 1955 law that was passed by the state. But in 1988, the state passed a law saying that city officials and county officials can buy surplus property at public auction. 
surplus property. When the county acquires tax deed, that is surplus to the county because the county never keeps it. If the county kept it, it would not be surplus. If the county gets rid of it and sells it again, that is surplus. So anyhow, that's where I am at the moment, and it's a, there's a longer story, but don't wish to bore you with that at this point in time. And I'm just trying to come up with the idea that if I don't, if I, if you go with the state's attorney's interpretation that the sale is null and void, I should get the property tax back as well as the initial purchase price. If I own the property, then I should have that in my portfolio, as it were. But as it was, the city put that, uh, the city, excuse me, the county put it up for auction, and the city bought the property at county auction, or was, give, was given the chance to buy it, and they bought it last September. So we got a motion that's been to made in a second to move it back to the county, and so you have your chance, uh, Bob, to uh, talk to the county commissioners about this issue. So it'll go, the motion's been there and see what happens with it. Any further comments on it? The motion been made and seconded to send it back to the county. Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of that motion to send back to the county a vote? Yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council Members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present voted seven yes, one excused. It uh, has been sent back to the county. Item 20. Second reading, rezone an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at East 57th Street and South Sycamore Avenue from the Sycamore Crossing Plan Development District to the C4 Plan Commercial and the Brooks Crossing Plan Development District for commercial, multifamily, and office uses and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. Good evening, Mike Cooper along with Shauna Goldamber representing Planning and Building Services. This is a request for approximately 62 acres of land in the northeast corner of East 57th Street and Sycamore Avenue. The applicant is Darrell Virick. The City Council has previously considered this land for uh, this property for a, a land use amendment and the zoning request that's being considered tonight is in conformance with the previous land use amendment which has been approved. The property is proposed to be split up into three different uses. In sub area A, which is designated as multifamily, will be four unit buildings, and that's approximately 21.5 acres in the north side of the property. In the southeast corner is approximately 29 acres, which is shown as office or multifamily residential. And then the balance of the property on the southwest corner of approximately 12 acres is proposed for future commercial development. And again, this is in conformance with the land use amendment, and the recommendation is to approve this zoning change. Questions, Mike, on item number 20. Others that wish to address the council? Bob? Uh, Mike, uh, the lots directly to the north of this property, are they single family or twin home, or what are they? They're residential, single family, twin home, and the applicant has been working with the owner of that development. And so there is, um, they've actually relocated one of their streets, and so there is going to be compatibility between this four unit construction with the, the lower density to the north. Thank you. Yes. Further questions? Others that wish to address the council on item number 20? Not, is there a motion by the council to approve? Move to approve. Let's. Let's move. Is there a second? Second, second. Costello. Costello seconded. Further comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to approve, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Councilmember Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present voted seven yes, one excused. Item 20 has been approved. Item 21. Second reading, rezone an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at West 60th Street North and North Career Avenue from the Agricultural District to the Planned Commercial District for future subdivision and commercial development and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. This property consists of approximately 80 acres of land. It is located on the north side of 60th Street North, west of Interstate 29, and adjacent to the 
future extension of Career Avenue. It's located across the east side of the, the University Center development that's currently underway. The city's 2015 plan has identified this area for future economic development. The applicant is Elizabeth and Everett Elkholm, along with Beverly Griffith. This property was recently in the news. Uh, it was a site that was being considered by uh, Walmart as a third superstore. And based on a corporate decision, the Walmart folks decided to withdraw their interest in this property. But the applicant or the owner is wishing to continue forward with the rezoning request to continue to market this property for future commercial development. The concept plan that has been submitted to, to us is not a plan that we're approving tonight, but it does show the potential on this 80 acres of roughly 600,000 square feet of, of building area on the property. Because the property is in conformance with the 2015 plan, I should say the rezoning request, the Planning Commission is making a recommendation to approve this zoning change. Questions of Mike on item number 21? Others? Okay, Bob Jameson. Mike, is that total 80 acres sewable with that north trunk sewer? I believe it is, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Further questions? Others that wish to address the council on item number 21? Not... Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Let's let's move. Is there a second? Second, Jameson. Jameson seconded. For the comments, <coughs> seeing no further comments, all in favor of the motion to approve item 21. Vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Councilmember Costello. Yes. Jameson. Yes. Kavanaugh. Yes. Knutson. Yes. Litz. Yes. Beninga. Yes. Brown. Yes. All members present have voted. Seven yes, one excuse. Item 21 has been approved. Item 22. Second reading, rezone and ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at East 41st Street and Faith Avenue to develop a church and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. This property consists of approximately 14 acres of land. It is located on the north side of East 41st Street, approximately halfway between Powderhouse Road and Six Mile Road. It is in the city limits of Sioux Falls. The applicant is Community Reform Church, and the church is proposing to use this site for a, a new church building. Uh, the recommendation by the Planning Commission is to approve this zoning change. Questions of Mike on item number 22. Others that wish to address the council on item number 22? Is there a motion to approve? Move for approval. Benninga. Benninga moves. Is there a second? I second that motion, Mayor. Knutson second. seconded. For the comments, seeing none, all in favor of approving item 22, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knutson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members have voted seven yes, one excuse. Item 22 has been approved. Item 23. Second reading, rezone and ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 801 through 807 North Cliff Avenue to redevelop the site and sell motor vehicles of less than 75 cc's, mopeds, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. This property consists of just under one half of an acre, and it is located on the north side of 2nd Street and west side of North Cliff Avenue. The proposed use of this property will be for the sale of motor vehicles, including mopeds and four-wheelers, up to a maximum engine size of 400 cc's. The applicant is Daniel Hoyland. And just to give you a little history of this site, back when Cliff Avenue was going through some reconstruction, the city at that time worked with the Department of Transportation. When there was additional right-of-way acquired to widen Cliff Avenue. We came up with some land use changes for property. And in this particular area, the property was zoned for future office uses. The property to the north and to the west is zoned residential, and to the south is, is commercial. Over the years, the property has remained in residential use. And now that Mr. Hoyland came forward with a request to use it for a commercial use, 
uh, in working with him and with the neighborhood in order to provide a transition into the neighborhood we came up with the concept of a planned development district and under this planned development district the property could be used for office or it could be used for the motor vehicle sales up to the maximum size of 400 cc's. Mr. Hoyland is here tonight because we wanted him to help explain what his idea for this corner is going to be. He does live up in the neighborhood. He's very familiar with the people that live around this area and he's done a good job of, of talking to the neighbors about his proposed development plan. And in working with him, it was felt that rather than just changing it to commercial to start with, which would then potentially open up that corner to a number of other heavier commercial uses, that we would make this more of a transition land use and see how his business goes in the future and he may come back and want to expand this area or to change the restrictions that we're putting on with the sub-area regulations tonight. So Mr. Hoyland is in the audience tonight and I believe that he would like to comment on his vision for this corner and what exactly a motor vehicle up to 400 cc's would, is going to look like. But the Planning Commission has recommended approval of this planned development concept as a transitional use for the neighborhood. Mr. Hoyland. Hello, I'm Dan Hoyland. Uh, my address is 1000 North Van Epps. Uh, and uh, I guess I just, uh, th I was doing a pallet business for a long time and the work got a little hard for me. So I thought, you know, doing these scooters might be a little easier. So uh, I got to checking around and, you know, I'm kind of an uh, environmental type guy. So I thought I'd try to, you know, put some things into the city to, you know, cut down on the gas usage and stuff. So uh, I figure there's probably going to be a big demand for them. And so I come up with this idea and thought I'd give it a whirl. Uh, most of the uh, scooters, uh, they're like 49 cc's. Actually, uh, they don't even require to have a dealer's license to sell those. All you have to do is have a driver's license and uh, insurance, proof of insurance. Uh, and uh, I figured I'd probably have to have other things too in order to survive. So I, I was looking around and I see that they have four wheelers, you know, little for little kids and stuff like that, 49 cc's, and you can get them up, you know, all the way uh, over 400. But I figured 400 to give me a good start anyway. So. Uh, uh, all they are is, you know, all-terrain vehicles, the four-wheelers. Uh, and then they have some now, uh, they come out with, they're like trikes for, I think they'd work good for older people. Uh, they're like 150 cc's and uh, you don't even have to put your foot down at a stop sign or anything. You know, you just stop and you can take off. So I thought it would probably be good for me to have one of those. <laughs> but, uh, so that's pretty much, uh, and then as far as uh, people trying them out, I probably would think that, uh, you know, like the mopeds, they aren't real loud or anything. So I figured, you know, if they have a driver's license and insurance, I would think they could go out on the cliff right off a of second there and go up to try them out, you know. So, you know, that was my thinking as far as that went. So uh, any questions? Questions are Dan. Uh, thank you very much. Others that wish to address the council on item number 23? Thank you. Not, is there a motion? I'd like to comment on that. I think uh, Mr. Cooper, Mr. Hoyland, you guys have come up with a good transitional plan for the neighborhood. Uh, I know it's an older neighborhood with a lot of houses. I don't look forward to, I mean, I don't, I don't anticipate a, a movement for uh, additional uh, new residential right in that neighborhood. So I, like I say, I think it's a good plan. And Dan, I hope you and Marcia have a lot of good luck uh, with your new business here. So uh, with that, I'd like to move to approve. Let's make the motion to approve. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Brown seconded the motion to approve. Further questions on the motion to approve? Seeing that, all in favor of the motion to approve item number 23, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council Member Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knutson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present voted. 
Seven, yes, one excuse. Item 23 has been approved. Item 24. Second reading, rezone ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at 57th Street and T. Ellis Road to allow commercial and residential land uses and amending the official zoning map of the city of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. This property consists of approximately 100 acres of land and it is located on the north side of 57th Street and east of the T. Ellis Road. We will also be considering item 34 tonight for this property. The owner is John Broke and he is proposing a development plan that will include approximately eight acres of commercial development, approximately 10 acres of multifamily residential, and approximately 82 acres of single family residential, uh, which about 20 of that would include a proposed school and possibly neighborhood park site. The Sioux Falls School District has identified an interest in looking at this corner for a new elementary school that would be opened in the fall of 2009. And so Mr. Brooke has been working not only with city staff but also with the school district on the layout of this property. I believe also that at first reading there was a question about Klein Street and to my understanding Klein Avenue is currently not improved at this time. So the recommendation by the Planning Commission for the zoning is to approve as as shown tonight for the C4, the RA1, and the RS2 designations. Questions of Mike on item number 24. Others that wish to address the council on item number 24. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Let's. Let's move. Is there a second? Second, Benninger. Benninger seconded. Further comments? Seeing no further comments, all in favor of the motion to approve item 24, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninger? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present voted seven. Yes, one excuse. Item 24 has been approved. Item 25. Second reading, rezone and ordinance of the city of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at southeast corner of East 69th Street and Southeastern Avenue to allow future development of 5.5 acres of residential zoning and 4.5 acres of off office zoning and 15 acres of commercial zoning and amending the official zoning map of the city of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. Tonight we have six items on the published agenda that pertain to property in the area of 69th and Southeastern Avenue. The petitioner is Ted Toms, who is here tonight. We will be requesting a deferral of four of the six items and I will explain the reason for that as we go through the agenda tonight. Item 25 is the rezoning for the southeast corner of this intersection, approximately 25 acres, and the proposed zoning includes about 5.5 acres for residential, approximately 4.5 acres for office, and approximately 15 acres for commercial development. This is going to be the same item as the number 38 later on in the agenda, and we are recommending approval of this rezoning tonight. Questions of Mike on item number 25? Others that wish to address the council on item number 25? Is there a motion to approve? I shall so move. Knudsen moves. Is there a second? Second, Jameson. Jameson seconded. Further comments? See no further comments. All in favor of the motion to approve item 25 will yes, those opposed will no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 25 has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. Item 26. Second reading, rezone and ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at the northwest corner of East 69th and South Southeastern Avenue to allow future development of 40.6 acres of single-family residential zoning, 20.4 acres of residential apartment zoning, and 12.5 acres of commercial zoning, and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. This is the property on the northwest corner of this intersection of 69th and Southeastern Avenue, approximately 78 acres. And as the ordinance describes, you can see that the property is proposed for commercial 
multifamily residential, single family residential, and recreation conservation uh, drainage purposes. I should have mentioned earlier that, that these zoning requests are in conformance with the land use amendments which have been previously considered by the City Council and we are recommending approval of this item tonight. Questions of Mike on item number 26. Others that wish to address the Council on item number 26? Not is there a motion? I move to approve Knudsen. Knudsen moves, second? Second, Costello. Costello seconded. Further comments on the motion to approve item 26? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to approve, vote yes, those opposed vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present voted. Item 26 has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. Item 27. Second reading, rezone and ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, rezoning property at the southwest corner of East 69th Street and South Sycamore Avenue to allow future development of 28.3 acres of residential zoning along the south of East 69th Street and 10.5 acres of commercial zoning at the southwest corner of the intersection at East 69th Street and the south southeastern avenue and amending the official zoning map of the City of Sioux Falls. Planning Commission recommends approval. This property is in the southwest corner of this intersection of 69th and southeastern. And this is one that we are going to be requesting a deferral because of an error that we discovered in the heading of the ordinance. It refers to Sycamore Avenue as opposed to Southeastern Avenue. And so we would like to defer this one, and I was just discussing it with the applicant about February 19th would be the recommendation tonight to defer this item. Move to defer to February 19th. Second, Jameson. Costello. Jameson, move. Costello, Jameson. second to defer item 27 to February 19th. Other discussion? Seeing no further discussion, all in favor of the motion to defer, we'll vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council Members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present voted. Item 27 has been deferred until uh, February 19th. Seven yes, one excused. Um, item 28. Second reading, major amendment and ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending Chapter 15.45.070, Diamond Valley Plan Development Districts at East 73rd Street and South Cliff Avenue, allowing changes in land uses as reflected in the revised subarea regulations to provide a banquet hall reception center. This property is located in the northwest corner of 73rd Street and South Cliff Avenue. It's about 1.6 acres in size. And it's proposed to be developed uh, adjacent to a new funeral chapel. This is somewhat of an unusual request that we considered because of the intent of the use of this building would be for a, a multiple functions. And we ha have asked a representative uh, tonight to come up here and do a better job of explaining it to you than I can. Um, as you look through your information on the plan development district, it does indicate that this banquet hall will also potentially in the future be requesting on-sale alcohol as an accessory use. And again, we, we would like the petitioner to come up and maybe give you a brief explanation on how this building will be used and how it's going to be tied in with the, with the future funeral chapel, which will be directly to the south of this site. But the recommendation is to approve this plan development district so that it would allow the banquet hall to be constructed um, as an accessory use. And Phil is going to be the spokesperson. I'll let him introduce himself. Mr. Mayor, Councilors, Phil Schmitz, uh, George Boone Funeral Home. Um, <clears throat> this uh, reception center that we're planning or we're asking for the major amendment is basically came out of an idea. Um, <clears throat> of course, we have the, the location on East 10th Street, and last year we served approximately 125 receptions there. Um, <clears throat> some of them, oh, anywhere from uh, 50 to 300 people inside the funeral home, and um, that's, not our, that, that's not our major purpose there, but our business is changing dramatically, and uh, our business used to be mostly 80%, 85% in the church, and now it's, um, it's closer to 50-50. 
and we can set, we're going to see that to continue to change in the future. The other thing that we're seeing changing is is that is that uh, churches um, there's a few of them yet that have um, large groups of elderly women <laughs> serving the funeral lunches. Um, in the last year, a couple of times. Um, They've said, you can use our facility, but you bring the people, you bring the food to serve it and, and, and clean up the mess and shut the light off um, when you leave. Uh, we built a funeral home in Brandon a little over a year ago, and we incorporated a serving kitchen into that. And um, um, we serve about 40 families a year there, and that's been working quite well. But the other thing that we've noticed is, um, and forgive my terminology, but <clears throat> um, I'm going to take the, the East 10th Street location if I have a service there at 10 o'clock in the morning and then um, we go to the cemetery and we come back for the reception time. Um, they're on the east end of our facility um, sharing their, their memories about their loved one and having a family reunion because that's what a funeral service is, is a family reunion, and, um, and having a good time. Um, they're having, uh, you know, they're, they're, they're really enjoying themselves. And, um, and then I have a service starting down in the on the west end of the building, and those people are not happy right now. Um, in, in an hour and a half, um, um, they're going to be where the other people were, and we call that mixing sad with glad. And um, it doesn't, it, it works, but it doesn't work well. When we bought the property on 73rd and Cliff, we were just planning on putting a, a funeral home there. Um, and, and also our market is changing that more families are choosing cremation. And um, um, we believe that this facility will be highly geared towards that, so it will not have preparation room facilities or, or things of that nature in it. But once again, we decided we didn't want to mix the sad with the glad. And um, um, this weekend, um, I had a reception at, uh, at a facility in Sioux Falls that's usually used for weddings, um, and uh, there were 500 people um, pushed into a room that for 300. And, um, it worked, it, worked, it worked nicely, but it was a memorial reception celebrating that person's life, and um, there was food and beverage there. Uh, the reason for the, the beer and wine is, is that we get requests for that all the time, and um, our insurance policies allow that, but, and I do allow them to bring that in as long as they, you know, uh, they have a family member watching over that, and um, um, I can't say that I really like it a lot, um, um, because I think the funeral home is a sacred place. But um, that's what the requests are. So we came up with this idea basically based on a model in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana by a group called the Buchanan Group, and where they, their major business is funeral service. And on their cemetery property, they put a reception facility. And um, they actually, um, they meant it for, for, for their funeral service families, but then it, it, um, it actually got larger, and um, they, they do more weddings there now, uh, receptions and other type um, of receptions, uh, you know, birthday parties, so on and so forth. And so um, we decided that um, we would like to try that here in Sioux Falls. And uh, uh, beer and wine, because it's a part of the culture, and uh, some people want it, you know, some don't. Um, but we want to be able to offer it in the future. And um, so it's a transition for our profession, and uh, that's where we're at. at this Thank point. you. Questions? Thank you very much. Others that wish to address the council on item number 28? Is there a motion by the council? Move to approve, Costello. Costello second. moved. Benny has seconded. Further comments? Seeing no further comments, all in favor of the motion to approve item 28, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Lips? Yes. Beninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present vote. Item 28 has been approved. Seven yes, one excuse. Item 29. Second reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, approving the exchange of real property. Good evening. Randy Bartunek, Director of Community Development and Public Parking. This ordinance will allow the city to exchange a um, vacant lot that we currently own at 509 South 4th with a uh, lot that's privately owned by James Jurgensen, located at 609 South Elmwood. When the uh, land exchange is completed, we're going to use the uh, property on South Elmwood as a part of our neighborhood revitalization program. Questions are Randy on item number 29. Others that wish to address the council on item number 29? 
Is there a motion by the council? Move, move to approve. Let's I second the motion. Knutson seconded. Let's make the motion. Knutson seconded. Further comments? Seeing none, all favor the motion to approve item 29. Vote yes. Let's close the vote. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knutson? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 29 has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. Item 30. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, by revising boundaries for voting precincts, precincts 1-13 and 1-16. Good evening, Deborah Owen, City Clerk. Uh, both items 30 and 31 were actually brought uh, through the Lincoln County Auditor at her request. Uh, actually, Sue Roust from Minnehaha County and uh, the Lincoln County Auditor and myself and Bev Chase from the school district all got together along with Jeff Schmidt in planning. And this is kind of the result. The issue is really the south end of town is growing and they really wanted to split those precincts into an um, equal number of people. And so they split two precincts, one in item 30, one in item 31. Questions of Deborah on item 30? Sure. Uh, Deborah, with the changes in the precincts, are we going to try to maintain those as identities rather than moving them around so people know where they're supposed to go each time they vote? Well, actually, um, with polling places, a uh, precinct is actually a fixed um, um, identification of the land. A polling place is actually we combine a number of precincts to, uh, to vote in a polling place. And we are hoping to that the 23 number will be kind of a number that we're going to stay with when it comes to municipal elections. Further questions on item number 30? Let's go to 31. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota by revising boundaries for voting precincts, precincts 2-10 and 2-15. Again, Deborah Owen, a city clerk. I actually, if you have any questions, I'm, I'm open. Questions? Not. If not, is there a motion to approve item 3031 set the hearing date for February 11th? I so move. Knutson. Knutson moved. Second. Second, Jameson. Jameson seconded. Motion made. Second set the hearing date for February 11th for item 3031. All in favor of that motion vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knutson? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present voted seven yes, one excuse. The hearing date has been set for items 3031 for February 11th. Item 32. First reading, an ordinance of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, amending the revised ordinances of the city by revising the name of person to receive application <laughs> for reduced taxation on new construction. We have an ordinance in place that provides for reduced taxation on new construction for industrial uh, qualified properties for downtown and for certain neighborhood areas. And in the ordinance that requires an application, it refers to the assistant director of building services the, is the person that would administer this. Due to some recent reorganization uh, changes in our department, we have now renamed or reclassified that position to the assistant director of planning and building and services, and so we're making that change to this ordinance. Questions of Mike and item number 32. Mike, with this, um, we don't have, would, would it be possible to add some kind of language here to have the assistant director of planning report to the city council the first meeting in February about the abatements that were authorized during the previous year? Yes, I think we could certainly work on that. I'd appreciate it. Thank yep. you. Okay. We'll, we'll present that at second reading as an amendment. Further questions? If not, is there a motion at the hearing date for February 19th for item 32? So moved, Costello. Costello moved. Is there a second? Second. Brown seconded. Further comments? Hearing none, all in favor of the motion at the hearing date for February 19th for item 32? Vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benega? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present have voted. The hearing date has been set for February 19th. For items 32, 7, 7 yes, 1 excuse. Item 33. 
A resolution amending the future land use map as part of the Sioux Falls 2015 Growth Management Plan, Petition 2007-10-13 at West 85th Street and South Western Avenue from the single family, multifamily and office institutional land use to an allocation of mixed use and multifamily future land uses. Planning Commission recommends approval. It will be noted that uh, Council Member Jameson will be excused from item for item 33. This is a request for a land use amendment of approximately 35 acres in the northwest corner of 85th and Southwestern Avenue. Clayton Jameson is the petitioner and the proposed development plan shows a mix of residential, multifamily, office institutional, commercial and a mixed use development concept at the corner of 85th and Western. This is a similar type of development proposal that we have been working on um, at least two other locations. We, we considered a request somewhat like this up on North Marion Road. And we are working with the developers on establishing land use concepts for these major intersections of arterial streets that have limited access. This land use plan um, does provide for a good mix of uses and the petitioner has been working with the adjoining neighbors on developing this proposed plan and the recommendation is to approve this amendment. Questions of Mike on item number 33. Others that wish to address the council on item 33. Is there a motion to approve? Move to approve. Let's, Let's move. Is there a second? Second, Benninger. Benninger seconded. Further comments? Let's see no, no comments. All in favor of the motion to approve? Vote yes. Those opposed? Vote no. Councilmember Costello? Yes. Jamison? Sorry. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninger? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present voted six yes, two excused. Item 33 has been approved. Item 34. Preliminary subdivision plan, South Vistas, Southern Vistas, 4th edition to the City of Sioux Falls, Minnehaha County, South Dakota, West 57th Street, and T. Ellis Road. The Planning Commission recommends approval. This is the item that we considered previously tonight uh, as item 24. This is the subdivision plan, which does include the layout of this property for the land uses and the zoning that you have approved previously tonight. It also does indicate a potential site for a future school park area. This is in conformance with our engineering requirements as well as our subdivision ordinance. And the recommendation by city staff as well as the planning commission is to approve this preliminary subdivision plan. Questions of Mike on item number 34. Others that wish to address the council on item number 34? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Let's, let's move. Is there a second? Second. Jameson. Jameson seconded. Further comments on that motion? Seeing that all in favor of the motion to approve item 34, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninger? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 34 has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. Item 35. <coughs> Preliminary subdivision plan, Brooks Crossing addition to the City of Sioux Falls, Minnehaha County, South Dakota, South Sycamore Avenue, and East 57th Street. The Planning Commission recommends approval. Again, this property was previously considered tonight under item 20 for the rezoning, and this is the subdivision plan for the property on East 57th and Sycamore Avenue, about 62 acres of land. And the development plan does comply with our engineering design requirements. It is being recommended for approval by city staff as well as the Planning Commission. Questions of Mike on item number 35. Others that wish to address the council on item number 35. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Let's move. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Brown seconded. Okay, further comments on that motion. Seeing that all fair, the motion approved. Item 35, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Councilmember Costello? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Benninger? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present have voted. Item 35 has been approved. Seven yes, one excuse. Uh, item 36. Preliminary subdivision plan, Tom's two addition to the city of Sioux Falls, Lincoln County, South Dakota. Northwest corner of 69th Street and Southeastern Avenue. The Planning Commission recommends approval. 
We are going to be requesting a deferral of the next three items, 36, 37, and 38, to the February 19th City Council meeting. Uh, one of those is being deferred so that it matches up with the rezoning petition, which has also been deferred tonight. And the other two have just some minor issues that we're trying to work out with the City Engineering Office, and I will emphasize the word minor issues. So we would like to defer these to the February 19th Council meeting. So a motion to defer item 36? So I moved. Yeah, and I second that motion. Let's move. Knutson seconded to defer item 36 to February 19th. And th so no further discussion on Pardon? Can we do all three at once for deferral? Well, you can if you want, but well, you have to make a substitute motion. I'd like to make a substitute motion to defer 36, 37, and 38. Not accepting okay. that motion. Okay, substitute motions by Litz and Knudsen to set February 19th, item 36, 37, 38. All in favor of that motion? Uh, Mr. Monson, I'd like to request that at the February 19th meeting we receive that additional information we requested about the overpasses and the policy that the community would uh, accept for railroad crossings versus. Uh, the, over, the expensive overpass that's being proposed on some of the uh, uh, railroad crossings. And I have been working with Mark Cutter, Director of Public Works, and we will get that information to you before the meeting. Okay, thank you. We'll get it to you this week. Got a motion made, substitute motion made, seconded to approve item 36, 37, 38. Further comments on that substitute motion? Just uh, defer until February 19th. Seeing that, all in favor of that motion to defer those three items? We'll vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council Members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Beninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present voted. Uh, items 36, 37, 38 been deferred to February 19th. Seven, yes, one excuse. Item 39. A resolution approving the naming of the Mayor's Neighborhood Conservation Area to Pettigrew Heights. I would like to uh, turn the podium over tonight to Ron Sabi, who is going to be representing the neighborhood naming committee within our neighborhood conservation area and he's going to give you uh, an overview of the recommendation that's being presented tonight for the name of Pettigrew Heights. So Ron, here you go. Thank you, Mike. My name is Ron Sabi, property owner at 737 West 10th Street. The boundary of this area that we're talking about is west of Minnesota Avenue to approximately like Menlo, it kind of jogs around by Grange, and from 9th to approximately 16th Street. Uh, the group, or I was here in front of your group uh, during November, and at that time I mentioned that we had a criteria for looking uh, for a name for this neighborhood. We wanted something with a heritage and historical background. We wanted something that was appropriate to the area as far as a name that would set it aside from other areas of the Sioux Falls. And we also wanted to have something that the residents would be proud to have. One of the things that we were also looking at is something that's going to represent the interests, the culture, and the business of the area. What I would like to do is just briefly touch upon the balloting that we conducted, both the website as well as uh, on-site at 18 different locations. There was 1,142 votes, and uh, approximately 700 of those votes was walk-in, and approximately 400 and some votes were done online. And the public input was very important to our committee because it did give us some guidance that was very important for coming to a decision as to what the name is. Uh, there are three basic categories. There is the geographic topographical type of category and the names that were tossed around was like Central Heights, Midtown, Hillcrest. Now one of the things that we really appreciated from the input from the public voting was the write-ins. We received 48 different write-ins and we gave serious consideration to about 10 of them. One of the write-ins was Summit Ridge and we did give a great discussion to Summit Ridge there was a handwritten note saying that this was the reference for this neighborhood during the early days of Sioux Falls. Now, I don't have any historical data to support that, but we thought this was something that should give uh, time to discuss. The final conclusion was Summit Ridge sounds like Prairie Ridge, sounds like 
all the new developments, and we felt like that does not set our area apart from other areas of Sioux Falls. So then we moved on to historical names. Such names as Old Town, Historical Heights, Historical Avenue District, Heritage Heights, Founders View, and Prospect Heights. I'm going to come back to that because there were two names from here that were on the top of the list, and I'm going to address that later. One of the things that we were concerned about this was it did not clearly distinguish Historical Heights or Old Town from other areas of Sioux Falls that would be considered Old Town or historical areas. The third category were personal names. And these are the names that were uh, provided to us as a write-in. Grisby, Bennett, Bowden, and congratulations, Mayor, your name was also submitted. And in addition to Pettigrew, Fayewick, and Irving, one of the things that we wanted to seek from the public was a representation of the various names that might be utilized for this neighborhood. There was an overwhelming response to Pettigrew. There was two to one. The other name was Fayewick we, that we gave serious consideration to. One of the things we were looking for was a landmark. Fayewick has his garage, his childhood home, as well as his adult home over in the area of 13th and Prairie. We also have the Pettigrew Museum, the residence of Pettigrew, which is located on 8th and, help me, I think it's Duluth or Spring, <laughs> okay. Now, the other names that were written in that we really wanted to discuss and give consideration, the, the key one was the name Grisby. And the reason, reason why we gave that serious consideration is because this gentleman was also a developer in this neighborhood along with Pettigrew. I'm not sure if they worked together or if they were competitors. I did not take the time to research that out. But Grisby was also, uh, they gave birth to the first white child in the city of Sioux Falls. And there was a very distinct uh, number of votes that were cast that were written in, and there was approximately about 15 votes. And we discussed that and then came to the conclusion that people probably would not associate with that name because of the fact is, is that it's not that well known. The other thing is, is that there's no landmark. Irving was the name of the neighborhood, and that was the Irving School. That landmark has been taken away. It's now the Bowden Center. And so we felt very strongly that it's important to have a landmark. I'd like to conclude with this report by saying that there were top, the votes came in very interestingly. There were like the top three category with only 93 votes separating them. Then there was another cluster, but quite a ways down. And then there was another cluster of votes that just basically said we weren't interested in these names. So we picked the top three. The top three was Old Town, Historic Heights, and Pettigrew Heights. The reason why we settled on Pettigrew Heights was because of the fact was, if you say Old Town, does this really represent this neighborhood? When you start to look at some of the new development going on, you got that uh, uh, the, the dollar uh, loan on uh, the corner right there between 10th and 11th, very modern looking. You have a lot of things that are going up in this neighborhood that's modern. There's going to be a disconnect. We also felt like when you're saying Old Town Sioux Falls, you're actually talking about Fort Sod, you're talking about maybe East Bank, you're talking about the older areas of Sioux Falls, and this would be confusing. Yes, we have old historic houses, but we just did not feel that this was appropriate. The other name that we considered was the Historic Heights. Our problem with the name Historic Heights was, what do you mean? Cathedral Historic Heights? McKinnon Park, or are you talking about All Saints? Just the term historic heights did not really address this. So we settled on the name for Pettigrew Heights for the reasons that it'd be nice to name something after him because there's no streets, there's no parks, there's nothing in Sioux Falls naming him other than what he gave to the city. We also have a landmark, so we feel very confident as long as the landmark is still standing and no lightning or anything happens, that we'll have something that we'll have as a landmark for this area. 
And we felt very strongly that we should recognize this gentleman has done a lot for the city of Sioux Falls. At this time, I'd like to open up for questions, and I believe there's a question. Questions, Ron? Okay, if not, others? Okay, Bob, let's. I just wanted to thank you, Ron Sabi, and Scott Allen back there, because I've been to a lot of those meetings. You guys have been down there relentlessly. You've done a lot of, lot of time and a lot of work on this here. Uh, you know, you, you put your time forward. I think that the selection of the name is going to go a long ways towards recognizing and marketing this area. So I think I'm safe on saying on behalf of the council, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Other questions? Others that wish to address the council on item number 39, come forward, please. Name and address. Um, my name is Carol Mashek. I live at 1014 West 22nd Street. Um, I am here as a private citizen, not representing any group. I have studied the history of Sioux Falls since 1974 and have just scratched the surface. Um, I took this voting that the public was to do very seriously and uh, made two trips, in fact, downtown because the first place I couldn't find the voting area. Um, I believe it is wrong to ask citizens of a community to vote on a civic project and then renege by saying, well, we never promised you that we would actually consider your top choice. If you study the city directories of this area from the 1870s to the 1920s, as I have, you begin to see that this was the neighborhood that built downtown Sioux Falls. All the new neighborhoods which grew south and north were basically built with the second, third, fourth generations of those people who were born and raised in this neighborhood. They went to Irving School or Central School. They went to Irving, McKinley, or Washington High School. Uh, they became a very close-knit West residential neighborhood. And that was our heritage. Where our founders lived, the name should reflect it. I do not believe that Pettigrew reflects this neighborhood. If it were George Pettigrew or RF's sister Lula Bell, I'd have no problem with the name Pettigrew. George and Lulabel gave their lives to this city after they moved here. Not so with Senator Pettigrew. I don't know what you know about this man's life. Up until 10 years ago, I thought he was fantastic. Then I began to studying his life. This is a very child-centered neighborhood. If you go out in the summertime, it is covered with children. The streets are, and sidewalks are covered with children playing. Senator Pettigrew did not live in that area. He lived nor north of 10th Street. He did not develop the neighborhood except for personal gain. In fact, he even acquired Bennett's addition by connivory. I, you know, it's fantastic to have Tourists come into town and let me tell them the stories of Pettigrew catching the train and Pettigrew bringing in the scenes and Pettigrew doing this and that by connivory. But I don't want the children of our community emulating that. And I don't think you would want it either. Uh, the life story of this man, and perhaps you haven't read Fanna Buck's Mr. Fanabus' book or any of the other things about him. He was a man without basic morals. Yes, he was our senator. Yes, he did good things for South Dakota. And yes, a few of the, those things did come to us here in Sioux Falls. Let's build a statue to him. But let's not name a neighborhood where the children will be thinking that he is some fantastic person. If you read his life story, if yeah, I often talked with people who actually were in the home when his wife was alive. If you know how he treated his family, you begin to understand why his boys wouldn't come back to his funeral. I just feel that if we're going to name it Pettigrew, let's do it for George Pettigrew and Lula Bell, not for Frank Pettigrew. Let's just build him a statue so we can read that he was a senator, but not have a neighborhood with his name. I appreciate what the committee did, but I would, I'm going to have a hard time thinking about Frank Pettigrew influencing the children of our community. 
Thanks, Carol. Questions of Carol? Thank you very much, Carol. Appreciate your time coming down tonight. Others that wish to address the council on item number 39? Is there a motion by the council or thoughts? In spite of uh, Carol's impassioned pleas there, I'm going to move to approve. Okay, let's 39. make the motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Kavanaugh seconded. Further comments on the motion to approve? Pat? I just, I'm sorry, I have a question from Ron. The Pettigrew Heights, I mean, was that, is that supposed to be named for Frank Pettigrew? Is it just Pettigrew? Is it, I mean, it really could just be Pettigrew the family. Just Pettigrew Heights, but I mean, in all seriousness, we were thinking of Richard Pettigrew, but we're not talking or naming it Richard Pettigrew or RF. We're talking about just Pettigrew Heights. Further comments? Got a motion been made and seconded to approve item 39. Further discussion? I see no further discussion. So all in favor of motion to approve item 39, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Beninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present vote. Item 39 has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. Item 40. A resolution include, including certain contiguous territory within the corporate limits of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, annexation 2008-0101 at 10th Street and Six Mile Road, Ben Buskirk. Tonight we have four petitions by the property owners requesting annexation into the city limits. Item 40 is a request of approximately 90 acres by Van Busker Companies at East 10th and Six Mile Road. And it is adjacent to the item 43 also that will be on the agenda tonight. And this is proposed for future uh, residential and other land use development on the northeast side of Sioux Falls. Questions of Mike on item number 40? Others? Kevin? Mike, it appears that uh, annexation of this property would create an island here where we have no, uh, no outside city boundaries. Do you know uh, if there are, is there an effort underway to uh, have this area annexed? Yeah, there's a, immediately to the south. Yeah, there is an effort underway to eventually bring that into the city, yes. So we think that'll be a temporary island. Thanks. Further questions of Mike on item number 40? <coughs> Others that wish to address the council on item number 40? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Let's. Let's move. Is there a second? Second, Kevin. Kavanaugh seconded. Further comments on that motion to approve? Seeing none, all in favor of approving item number 40, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present vote. Item 40 has been approved. Uh, seven yes, one excused. Item 41. A resolution including certain contiguous territory within the corporate limits of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, annexation 2007-1201 at 85th Street and Cliff Avenue. This property consists of approximately 40 acres. It is located north of 85th Street and west of South Cliff Avenue and is within the Harrisburg School District. It is also proposed for future residential development. Questions of Mike on item number 41. Are there those that wish to address the council on item number 41? Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Let's, Let's second move. Jameson. Jameson seconded. Comments on the motion to approve? Seeing that all in favor of the motion to approve, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present voted. Item 41 has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. Item uh, 42. A resolution including certain contiguous territory within the corporate limits of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, annexation 2007-1202 at 77th Street and Cliff Avenue. This property consists of approximately 12 acres on the west side of South Cliff Avenue and adjacent to 77th Street. Don Nix is the owner of the land, is proposing to eventually develop this into commercial and office uses. It is also adjacent to the future corridor of the South Dakota Highway 100 right away. Questions of Mike on item number 42. Others that wish to address the council on item 42? Is there a motion to approve? 
So moved, Benninger. Benninger moved. Is there a second? Second, Brown. Brown seconded. Further comments? Seeing no further comments, all in favor of the motion to approve, vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council members Costello? Yes. Jamison? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Blitz? Yes. Benninger? Yes. Brown? Yes. All members present vote. Item 42 has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. Item 43. A resolution including certain contiguous territory within the corporate limits of the City of Sioux Falls, South Dakota, annexation 2007-1203 at Brandon School on Six Mile Road. This is approximately 20 acres of land. The owner is the Brandon Valley School District. It is located adjacent to the annexation that you previously approved as item number 40. It's on the east side of Six Mile Road, and it is in an area that was identified in our 2015 plan as a future neighborhood school park site. Staff has been working with the school district on how to eventually extend utilities to this area. The indication that we have from the school district is that they would like to construct an elementary school on this property that would be open by the fall of 2009. Questions of Mike on item number 43. Others that wish to address the council on item number 43. Is there a motion to approve? So moved. Let's. Let's move. Is there a second? Second, Jameson. Kavanaugh seconded. Further comments? Seeing none, all in favor of the motion to approve item 42, 43, a vote yes. Those opposed, vote no. Council Member Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Item 43 has been approved. Seven yes, one excused. That's it. Is there a motion to adjourn? Move to adjourn. Kavanaugh moved. Is there a second? Second, Costello. Costello seconded. All in favor of the motion to adjourn will vote yes. Those opposed vote no. Councilmember Costello? Yes. Jameson? Yes. Kavanaugh? Yes. Knudsen? Yes. Litz? Yes. Benninga? Yes. Brown? Yes. Stand adjourned. <laughs>